For questions 13 through 17, we'll find the domain of function f and the range of function f. That's how this is denoted for the given real value function. So note that in a real value function, both the domain and the range consist of real numbers. So there's no complex or i values. All functions below should be considered real values. So when I look at 13, I need to consider, since I don't have a calculator right now to use, I need to consider what is the parent function of this. The parent function is the function y equals the square root of x. Now in this function, remember that this value at a minimum would be 0. At a minimum it would be 0. So I could plug in 0. The square root of 0 is 0. I could plug in 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Now, yes, I could plug in 2, but the square root of 2 would give me an irrational number, just like the square root of 3 would be irrational. Now, the square root of 4, it's a perfect square root. The square root of 4 would be 2. And I could do the same. I could do 5, 6, 7, 8, but I'm all going to get irrational numbers. I'm going to skip to 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Now, I'm going to go ahead and graph these pretty ordered pairs of 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. And we can see this is what our function looks like for the parent function. Okay, sorry, I had to help family members out here quickly. Okay, so let me come back here. If we think about the domain of this function, and let's change this and call this f of x here. If we think about the domain of this, we could write, okay, the domain of function f. Now, what is the correct way in which we could uh, illustrate the domain? And so we could write it like this. We could say the function the domain of this function is equal to all L x values such that x is greater than or equal to 0. Similarly, the range of function f is equal to all y values such that y, notice that the outputs are 0 or above. They are also greater than or equal to 0. Okay, now let's apply that to the function that we're given. So I'm going to turn this here so we can see this better. Okay, let me rewrite this. So f of x is equal to, I can factor out a 3, 3 times x minus 5. There's 3x minus 15. This value on the inside, after I plug in any input values, the smallest it can be is 0. So 3x minus 15 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now when I solve that, I'm going to add 15 to both sides. I get 3x is greater than or equal to 15. Divide by 3, and all x values for this function, the inputs, the x values, have to be greater than or equal to 5. So I can go ahead and can say, okay, the domain of function f is equal to all x is such that x is greater than or equal to 5. Now, I think it's going to be helpful for us to see the outputs here. So let's go ahead and let's make a very simple table, knowing that we don't have a calculator right now to use. 5 is the smallest number that I can plug in. So 5 or greater, I plug in 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. So square root of 0 is 0. Simple enough. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, could I plug in 6? So square root of 6, let's see, 6 minus 5 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3. This would be the square root of 3. I could do that, but I don't really know off the top of my head what is the square root of 3. I know it's less than 2, but how much less? So let's try 7. So 7 minus 5 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. I can't get the square root of 6. Nothing wrong with that. I just don't know the exact value. It's not an ordered pair in which the input and the output would be integer values. Let's try 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So let's do 8, 3. Here is 5, 6, 7, 8, and up 3. 1, 2, 3. And knowing that this function is going to mirror the function that I just graphed for you right here, knowing that we can already see that it's headed like this, right? It's headed like this. So how do I come up with the range? Well, in this particular instance, we can see that the smallest y value, again, occurs at 0. So all y such that y is greater than or equal to 0.
So I do want you to recognize these. I want you to recognize these. Um, in the past, we have just we would have just done x's have to be greater than or equal to five, um, or in we have to say y's are greater than or equal to zero. You probably would have done that in freshman year, maybe some sophomores. But now that you are at three, four, or above, we may have looked at something like this interval notation where we said it, um, it could be five, it could be five or greater. Notice that I'm including the five. And here, for this would be for the domain and for the range, it can be zero or greater. Now I want you to recognize all of these knowing that half of your test is multiple choice, half of your test you do not get to use a calculator. You need to recognize the different options in which they may present the domain and the range.